So, Yellow, how you doing, my friend? What's going on? I'm doing amazing. How you doing? I'm great. I'm blessed. Thank you. Thank you. Man, I um, I listened to your music recently, and that's what that's what got me to reach out to you because I love what you do. I love what you do. But before we get into that, I want to ask your name, <laughs> Yellow Pain. How did you come up with this name? Uh, so the name is a representation of my music. So uh, yellow is a color that represents happiness. And um, pain that represents everything I've ever been through. So yellow pain is a happy representation of my pain, basically just meaning stay strong no matter what you go through. That's amazing. And I noticed that your hair in all of your videos is yellow. Is Do you have yeah. a plan to keep it yellow forever? Are you going to change yeah. it? <laughs> I, no, no, I plan to keep it yellow as long as I have hair. Um, okay. Now, now I'm working on an album right now, um, which is called Bloody Summer, and I'm uh, it's black temporarily, um, just so I can look more like the people I'm talking to, um, if that makes sense. But um, right. Aside from that, though, yeah, it'll be forever yellow. Right, right. I like that. I like that. A nice vibrance to it, which is cool, and I think that represents a lot of people's lives. To be honest with you. Um, I guess where they want to be um, vibrant, vibrant in their thoughts and and everything, but there's there's always like a deep rooted pain in everyone's life. It's like we have to we have to endure some pain in order to overcome, to learn, to grow, um, and that sort of thing. Where did you grow up? Is it Dayton, Ohio? I was looking online. Dayton, Ohio. Yeah. So you're a native from Ohio. Yeah. Is that where you currently reside or are you living somewhere else now? I live in Atlanta, Georgia now, but I'm born and raised in Dayton, Ohio. Okay. Okay. What was it like growing up there in Dayton? <laughs> small town, um, small town mentality. It was a lot of competition. It was a lot of, um, you know, obviously it was a, a, a city without a lot of resources with uh, no celebrities. You know, I grew up in a house with a lot of siblings. You know what I mean? So um, it was tough coming up, you know what I'm saying? But um, one thing that I love about Dayton is that because it's such a small town, it's like everybody knows everybody. And when you really need to get things done, you know what I'm saying? It's it's pretty easy to reach anybody from the mayor to the uh, police officers to, you know, just to get 40 people in a music video at one location very quickly. You know, it's very easy to do those type of things. So, you know, it was it was some toughness about it, but then there's also the perks. Yeah, yeah. How many yeah. siblings have you got? Um, So I got the type of uh, parents that, um, you know how you got in every hood, you got that one family that just be like, you know, you're going through something, just come stay with us, if that makes sense. You right. know, so I got siblings that's other, that's friends of other siblings from school that grew up with me that's now my siblings, you know what I mean? So yeah. to put a definitive number on it, I can't, but, um, you know, we've had up to 16 people in the house at once. <laughs> wow, wow, <laughs> that's amazing. Sure. Um, your music, as I said, is is incredible. Like, I must be honest, I used to love hip hop, but as yeah. I've gotten older, I've started to, I don't know, almost lose my love for it. The art is incredible, uh, but the artists <laughs> are, are not really producing the art that I want to hear. Yeah. What's your thoughts of hip hop today and um, rap music in general? I think uh, sonically it's evolving um, as far as the sound of it. I think it actually is, you know, with anything that, that happens for a long time, I think it's, it's actually getting better in my opinion, okay. but sonically, but everything else, I feel like it's, it's on a strong decline in a lot of areas. You know what I mean? Um, because of social media, you know, it's anybody uh, can compete, you know, in hip hop and, um, so it's getting it's getting very watered down. Um, it's getting less and less important to say something um, with substance, and more important to say something that will uh, go viral. You know what I mean? So it's kind of upsetting uh, for the culture of hip hop, but at the same time, you still got you know your yellow pains. You know what I mean? So yeah. Good. Who's your influence? Who's your musical influence? Or like, who do you listen to? Where you get your motivation? 
when it comes to hip hop specifically, uh, the, yeah. I listen to Meek Mill a lot. Um, that's probably my favorite rapper. Um, right, right. Growing up, I listened to all everything. You know what I mean? But but I'm not just I don't just only listen to hip hop those. You know what I mean? I listen to Taylor Swift and you know Florida Georgia Line and other genres as well. But hip hop specifically. Mm. You know, I, 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 I've I soaked up the game for a long time, but I think Meek Mill is probably the artist that I, like, if I just get in the car nine times out of ten, that's what I'm going to be playing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's a very deep character. But I think it's really good as well, listening to different genres. I think that can really bring some diversity to rap music when you listen to other stuff. Absolutely. Um, just experiencing other things in life. Because sometimes there's... There's artists that are rapping, which it's almost like they're regurgitating a lot of what other people are saying because they're all listening to similar stuff. Yeah. There's very similar world views. Um, so it can become a little bit stagnant in some respect. Yeah. Um, when did you start writing music? I started writing music at like seven years old. I've been writing music since I was a kid, yeah. Rap specifically, yeah. right? How did it just come to you? What? So I had I had an older cousin, and he was rapping. And um, he was cool, you know what I mean? Like he had he had the girls, and you know what I mean? Like he had I won't even say he had a lot of money, you know what I'm saying? But because I was seven, you know, you got three hundred dollars and twenty dollar bills, and it looked like a lot of money. So he he had some money. He had the girls. You know, he got a lot of attention, and um, and he was rapping. So you know, that's usually why most people get into it. You know, they see somebody, uh, you know, getting what is supposed to be like the rapper lifestyle, and they get influenced by it. So that's why I started off, you know, so early, and I got into it. But I think as I developed in it and got better and better, you know, once I got like a little bit older to realize what li what was happening in life, you know, um, rap was my emotional outlet. It was like the only place I could, I really felt heard, you know, even though it was just me by myself and um, because I had the talent um, and people was actually receiving it in a certain type of way. I think that's when it became like, okay, this is where I personally go to vent my emotions. That's amazing. Yeah. I remember when I was younger and I was feeling stress and pain, I used to write down stuff. Sometimes yeah. it's a way of venting and you kind of feel better afterwards once you jot it down on paper. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you can put it into some kind of lyrical content, that's really cool. That's really good. So you say as young as seven. Yeah. Yeah. And how old are you now? Um, 28. 28. Wow. Okay. That's, that's a little while um yeah, my whole life. yeah yeah so as i mentioned before um i first heard about you through instagram it was just you know scrolling through and then this song came on and i just thought okay another rap artist probably garbage but then <laughs> when that's what it's it's come to you know yeah. i just thought just another guy all right let's hear what he's got to say but i was like Oh, wow. I'm actually learning some stuff here. And it was, uh, I think it was the, the way it was uh, filmed. It was like taking place in a, in a classroom. Um, I think it was something called uh, My Vote Don't Count or something like that. Yeah, that's the name um, of it. I'm sure I've got it here somewhere. I don't know if it will come through. Everybody out talking about this they don't want to see us vote and we never do so we see the can you hear it yeah. we do count and they never really let it show so now i'm gonna break it down because if i don't you would probably never know first thing first you know back in middle school when they told us it was three branches of the government we forgot it when we got old it's the judicial the legislative and the executive but all we know is the executive that's the mayor or the governor and the president now none of them three people make no laws they should be checking so the laws come to their death and all they do is say no or yes Hey, seriously, absolutely incredible. Like, I was just listening to it thinking, I'm actually learning right now. And I had to, I didn't have to put it on repeat. You know, when it stops and then it plays again, it was just playing again and again and again. And I was like, 
it just brought to my attention that music that we are listening to now is just entertainment. And mm. it also brought to my attention that a lot of the music that I had been listening to over the years, as long as it had a good rhythm um, and the flow of the lyrics was good, um, melody, then, you know, I'll dance to it and bop my head. But this was a nice rhythmic way of educating me and a lot of people, I would say. Mm -hmm. What encouraged you to start writing lyrics of like real substance? The last person I, I felt really done that sort of stuff was probably Nas, in all fairness, but there's probably many other artists. What what shaped you to start writing lyrics like that? Well, when I was younger, I listened to a lot of um, hip hop just because I was so influenced by the culture. And of course it was like the Nas's, the Jay-Z's, the, you know, the Eminem's, the Ludacris's, and, you know, not the uh, get back, get back Ludacris, but the, you know, like the introspective Ludacris. And a lot of those uh, artists coming up, you know, the Papooses that, you know, when I heard some of their music and I heard them really venting their pain, you know, it kind of gave me the courage to do that, you know, to like, okay, this is hip hop is a place where I can, I can let my emotions out. Now, I think as I, uh, as I got older, um, especially getting, you know, put, starting to put it out, I realized the way people received it, it, you know, it started to really, really help people through their situations and help me through my situations. So I think um, just a, a mixture of the feedback and also the emotional uh, release of it, you know, in combination, you know, it, it let me know the power in hip hop, if that makes sense. And not just hip hop, but my my voice specifically. It let me know that I have a lot of, uh, I have the ability to, to help people get through and understand things in a way that I can't just by talking to you. And um, so it's now, at, the, at this point, it's a responsibility, you know what I mean? Right, yeah, yeah. I hear that. That's so good. I remember when I first started using social media, I used it as a place to kind of um, document my fitness journey to let people know what I was doing. And then I had a lot of people who showed me some love and they were like, wow, I didn't know this stuff. Thank you so much. So it felt really great that people were seeing value from it. So it encouraged me to create more. So similar to yourself, really. Just like, you know, just like you now, you know, you you know for sure that if you learn something new that's like extremely helpful in your life and, um you know, it, and there's, you know, millions of people out there who are misguided by a specific process or how something works, I could imagine you would get so passionate that you had to make sure that nobody that's following you is going in the wrong direction. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for real, for real. So that particular s song talks about lots of po politics and stuff. Uh, so from what I understand, besides government, um, who are bigger, dis big decision makers, who else mm -hmm. can make a, a change, big change to the world, would you say? Well, you know, specifically in the... Um... And a song, my vote don't count. I was mm -hmm. talking about all of the levels of government. So you have, you know, there's so many people that that are government that we don't necessarily think about as government. You know what I mean? But the government is literally how the the whole city works. From you know, you got the city council, your know, local city council. You got, you know, uh, like and and it, and it comes down to different things you can vote on as far as who picks up the trash and you know, like like. Right. So small, you know, to the to the school board, you know what I mean? To like how your kids, what they eat in the school, you know what I mean? Like, and when it gets that close to your life and you think about the government, you know, a lot of people where I'm from, you know, specifically, you know, growing up, I, I always had the understanding that if we want some help from the government, we're thinking president, we're thinking whoever the president um, of, you know, our country is, that's who is, who is doing the things that are, you know, giving us the short end of the stick. And in all actuality, a lot of times it's us because the problems that we have are a lot of those times are, are issues that we can vote for. And we don't actually show up to vote because we don't believe in the system. But the people who do vote are benefiting from the actual effort that they put in to show up to the polls. So, you know, um, understanding that there's multiple levels of government and 
the smallest level of government is probably the most impactful to you, you know, knowing that those people are who can shape your specific life uh, in immediately. But as far as, you know, people that can help the world, that I'm that's from a from a, a policy and law change in perspective. You know, obviously outside of the government, you have us, you know, we have voices, you got music, hip hop, et cetera. But from a, uh, um, a policy standpoint, you know, there's different levels of the government that we should focus on and not just the president. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. That all makes sense, really. There's a lot of local committees that can do their own thing and not focus too, too much on the top end of the hierarchy <clears throat> are there any um any things that you are doing outside of music which you're using to influence people within your city or country you reckon yeah absolutely so you know i do music i'm um also a motivational speaker so i go to schools uh you know different um like whatever they have like uh what are they called like uh not not I'm not, I don't want to just say events, but what are they called? Like a, not assemblies. Um, where they just have panels of speakers and you know events like that. I do a lot of those things. Um, aside from that, um, I do my own personal philanthropic stuff. You know, just going to the communities on my own. I have a documentary called uh, Simplified that I've been screening for about uh six months to a year now. That's going to um release in 2024, and that's breaking down the government in the same way I did it with the song, but to a way more uh uh digest easily digestible for an everyday person um to understand so you know that's coming out and um and i think it's going to be a treat for the world to be honest amazing and where can that be um streamed so right now it's not out um so this when it is when it does come out where would it be netflix or amazon prime or YouTube. We, we haven't partnered with anybody specifically just yet, but um, it will be on a on a large platform uh, such as one of those two. Um, but yeah, right now we're doing private screenings. Like um, we did a lot of different colleges. We did Morehouse. We did you know we we did a college tour with the documentary. Just you know under just seeing how people feel about it, and um, and we did a screening in Hollywood. We did a screening in Atlanta, and uh, people love it. So um, it'll be coming out real soon. That's cool. Can't wait. I'm excited. I definitely want to check that out for sure. I think you're going to love it. I swear, because anybody that's like that just feels that's, that might be on the verge of like, should I vote? Is it important? Is it not important? You know, a lot of times when people talk politics, it's just like a lot of big words that fly over your head. And it's like, yo, what are we talking about? I, I, I'm going to just I just choose to just focus on getting my money feed my family and whatever y'all got going on, y'all got going on. That's like the, you know, the uh, American perspective for the most part, or not even American, any any country that's in a democracy, that's kind of the perspective in a large population of the people don't participate. But when you understand why it's so important, it's almost extremely hard to not want to, you know, yeah. and where I'm kind of playing a, a role in this, uh, this whole thing. That's really, really good. But yeah, it's pretty... As you said, it is it's quite typical of a lot of people to feel almost demoralized to to vote, especially if they're voting and things seem the same, you know, yeah. they lose hope and they don't see that there's much point in doing that. So as you just mentioned, people focus on uh, taking care of their whole household, you know, mm -hmm. just making sure they have enough money to put food on the table and pay the pay the bills. Mm -hmm. Um, in your music videos, there seems to be almost a, a common theme where you're walking through telling a story of events, um, like you're painting a picture um, of what's of, of life and almost um, giving people advice. Is there a certain direction with your videos, the way they're constructed? Like, do you choose to have it a particular way so that people can digest it better? Do you understand what I mean? I'll say this. A lot of my music videos, especially the ones in the, in the style that you're referring to, it comes from a place of passion, a place of uh, where I've almost probably cried, got extremely emotional, and I wanted somebody to get something. And I, and I wanted them to get it so bad, it, it like talking won't work. 
Um, yelling, shouting won't work. So it's like, how do I show them in a way that they can see them, put themselves in this situation and understand what's like, what's, what's either being done wrong or what needs to change in their life or, you know, like, and we're talking about the heavy subjects. Some of the songs I got are about drug addiction, where you try to talk to people you love, you know, but, but when people don't like to be preached to, you know what I mean? So if you can do it in the most entertaining fashion, you know, it's, it's almost tricking people into making a change for themselves. And that's kind of what I like to do is, is allow people, I like to put up a mirror with a lot of music videos, allow people to be able to see, see themselves in it. And now they can make the decision of, do I want to change or don't I want to change? And a lot of the times, or I won't say a lot of the times, but I've had so much success with people uh, quitting their own drug addictions, treating their children better, getting out of the streets and trying to focus on uh, other ways of making money. You know, these are, are, are some of the results just because I get so passionate and it seems like the only way I can really, really, really get the point across is to almost shock people into change and allow them to see themselves, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like true. even with um, my vote don't count. I don't know if you saw the entire music video, but the way that I had to do it um was the whole first half of the song. I spoke from the perspective of the everyday American. I said I've been broke all my life, but I kept hope all them nights. You see, you see, uh, business in my city. Yeah, they closed the all twice. I would just ride down Salem on them damn potholes. I can't drive. You know what I'm saying? I, I complain in the same fashion that most people, you know, and I feel like that's why the song was able to to take off so much because people were like, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, voting don't matter. And then I explained it because when you just come off straight preaching to somebody, you know, a lot of times nobody even want, uh, like you go to school to learn and then you go home and you want to and it's be entertained. You know what I mean? You mm -hmm. you don't want to go home. And Well, some people, you know, that's on fire. You got the muscles. I'm sure you're probably trying to learn all day. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but, but but some people, they, they get the learning in that they're trying to get and then they check it out. You know what I mean? So when you're trying to get people to, that's not in the, in the, in a mood to learn to learn something you have to do it in a way that they can relate and in a way that's entertaining you know what i mean yeah 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 it's it's the way it's created it's it's incredible but yeah like what you're saying there i think if you can speak to them on a on a level playing field where it's like you're in pain i've been in pain i know exactly how you're feeling and this is another side to look at things and being able to paint the picture as well and slowly holding their hands and guiding them out of the situation. Um, yeah, by creating a nice visual picture of it is fantastic. Do you come up with the visual concepts yourself or do you have like a team of people who help with that? Me. Wow, it's all coming from your head. Yeah. You know, and I, and I got people around me that that give suggestions. So I won't I won't necessarily say that I've never had any assistance. You know what I mean? Even from um, if I hire a specific uh, videographer to, to do this particular job, you know, there's always been suggestions around. But you know, for the most part, you know, these ideas come from really passion it comes from me like how can i get somebody to how can i get and when i say somebody I, usually it's a specific person you know what i mean like how can i get my 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 uncle who's struggling with this to understand you know that he sh you know he should move a different way how do i get this lady that i see every day to understand you know how do i get this person that's in a uh, abusive relationship to leave like how what can I do you know because I know talking to them is not going to help so what can I do and then you know that's how these ideas usually come up by trying to show them themselves in the video really good really good are you are you religious or spiritual do you have any certain beliefs which keeps you grounded and strong Absolutely. I believe in God. And I, you know, I guess I would cl most closely uh, identify with a Christian religion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was that through your parents or did you start later with the Christian faith? Um, as, as a child, my mom, you know, always told me to believe in God. And, you know, we went to church early on. Um, you know, obviously through life, I just kind of navigated by myself. And then um, probably somewhere within the last three or four years, you know, 
uh, I just needed God and I went to him and um, it, it, it really helped me. Yeah. What would you say was the, the, the hardest part of your life, the most painful point in your life? The most painful point in my life, I couldn't even say on a podcast, but, uh, um, right. Okay. I, I've dealt with a lot of things. You know what I mean? I lost a lot of close people, friends, you know, gunned down, you know, I've, uh, you know, I've been extremely impoverished, not having, you know, a place to go, et cetera. You know, I've dealt with a lot of things, uh, close friends that I thought would be my friends for the rest of my life, you know, turn it back on me, you know, the whole nah. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. I understand. But it all happens for good reason. You know, it's uh, when we reach these real low points, um, there's so much gems in the in 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 there, isn't it? It's like um, um, they say diamond is created under pressure and that sort of thing. Yeah. But it's almost as well as though when we reach a really low point, everything else seems easy in comparison. It's like if you feel a bit of pain, it's like yeah, this is pain, but it's not that painful. Yeah, exactly. You yeah, know? exactly. Um, and there's a saying as well, um, when God has a gift for you, he wraps it up in problems. Uh, yeah. I like it. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so, um, what do you hope your listeners will achieve? Let's say from life, from listening to your music, like what's, what's your goal from it? What would you say is the ultimate goal? Um, the ultimate goal for my listeners, that's that's a great question. To be honest, I, I want people to understand that um that they still have life, you know what I mean? Because a lot of times, you know, even me at times, not now, you know, um, you know, I, I've developed a, a much tougher skin, but you know, a lot of times through life, you know, you get to a point where you feel like this is it like like i've re i've plateaued i can't you know go any further and you some people you know it, it can get as low as suicide but some people it just comes at, at a suicide while you're still living where you just kind of like accept the job that you had where you just accept the circumstances where you just drink every day to just kind of self-medicate or you know whatever type of you know drug you may do you know why you know like where you just like really give up hope in seeing something much much greater than your current circumstance and um i had put out an album a few years ago uh but the title is the most important part and it says i'm still here because i didn't give up and um, that's what I want people to feel, you know, every day. Like, I'm still here because I didn't give up, you know. Like, that's what I want them to, to internalize. Amen. That's amazing. Love it. Thank, Thank you so much. Where can people find your music? And what's, what's, what's next for you? People can find my music everywhere. My music is wherever you listen to music, type yeah. in Yellow Pain. That's Y-E-L-L-O. P-A-I-N, and it'll be there, you know, whatever you listen to it on. I mean, what's next for me? Like I said, I'm uh, I'm releasing an album. It's like a Stop the Violence themed album, and it's called uh, Bloody Summer, and it's coming out real soon. Amazing. All right. Definitely want to check that out. Are you doing any tours or anything, or is that something in the future planned? Yeah, I, I've been on tour uh, several times. I don't have a tour plan right now. Um, I just really want to like this. This album is extremely important to me, so I'm gonna really focus on putting this out and, and getting the messages and the visions out. And then after Bloody Summer, we'll probably consider a tour. Amazing, amazing. I'll definitely hit uh, help to share some of that. I want people to listen to your music. It's Thank you. Truly inspirational stuff. Thank, Thank you very much for all your work which you're putting out in the world. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time, my friend. Um, yeah. Be blessed. Thank you. It was nice talking to you. Absolute pleasure. You got Take it. care. Yeah.